totally variable costs are those costs that you would incur if you sold one more or would not incur if you did not. In this course, totally variable costs will be represented by TVC or TVCs. Generally speaking, totally variable costs or TVCs are raw material costs, including purchased parts, subassemblies, etc., outside processing costs, such as painting, finishing, or any type of plating um, that might be done, or something like non destructive testing. Additionally, freight in or out and sales commissions that are paid on a per unit or percentage basis are included as well. The items above generally cover 99% of all TVCs. Now, one item notably excluded from totally variable costs that I'm sure you've already picked up on is direct labor. Let me say that one more time. Totally variable costs do not include direct labor. Now I get it, okay, I, I, I get it. Every other method of accounting that exists includes direct labor as a variable cost bud. How in the world can throughput accounting possibly be correct if we don't account for labor? How can we not call direct labor a variable cost? Well, we're not saying that labor doesn't vary because it does. Now, yes, yes, it varies maybe three to 5%, maybe 7% in the month when we really run a lot of overtime. As crazy as it sounds, that does not make labor a totally variable cost. We're not saying that labor isn't variable. We're saying labor is not totally variable. So we really need to be precise in our definitions and our understanding here. When something is totally variable, it will be incurred if we sell an additional product or it will not be incurred if we don't. It's that simple, but it's that fine distinction that will not allow or categorize direct labor as a totally variable cost. Secondly, I didn't say we wouldn't account for direct labor. We're just going to do it in a different manner than has traditionally been done. Now, if labor moved in a totally variable fashion, we wouldn't be paying for shifts or salaries. We would be paying for labor on a piece rate basis. So let's dig into this a little bit more. Now, out of the many companies that I've worked with, I've only had one guy at one plant that was paid on a piece rate basis for one year. And then the company stopped paying him on the piece rate basis. So in my experiences, I would say piece rate labor, for all intents and purposes, simply no longer exist. We just don't pay people on the piece rate basis anymore. Thanks to the minimum wage laws, you have to run the piece rate payroll alongside a traditional payroll to ensure the employees earn the minimum wage. So at that point, you might as well just run the wage and hour payroll and forget the piece rate payroll and just simplify your administration. So for that, among other reasons, we do not see piece rate pay any longer. So, in today's environment, almost all of our laborers are paid an hourly wage. Most employees are categorized as a part of direct labor, working a predefined number of hours in a shift, and it's that number of shifts occurring within the pay period, whether that be a week, two weeks, or a month, that is driving labor expense. Labor is not varying with our production. Now, I realize that seems strange, but think about this. What would happen if we were walking the floor and a manager saw a machine broken down and the laborers waiting for it to be fixed. The first thing any manager will say is, oh great, now guess what? Now I'm paying this guy just to stand around. So if laborers are paid for production, how then is it that you can claim they're paid while not producing? The reality is this, labor is not paid for production despite how much we want that to be the case. Our laborers are paid for their availability, and we as managers are hoping to turn that availability into productive use. So it's a very nuanced point, but it's important that we understand that now direct labor is not totally variable and it's not incurred when we produce a unit, but rather has already been occurred a priority to any of the production we're going to do. Thus, in throughput accounting, labor will act just like a period cost. Now, what does that mean on a throughput accounting income statement? Generally speaking, and of course, there's always minor exceptions. But in essence, we should be able to tie back the payroll on the throughput accounting income statement to the 941s fairly easily because throughput accounting expenses all labor as it's incurred. We're not deferring labor costs to the balance sheet. There's no allocation of direct labor. 